Well, a rare treat because we have the evolution of Porsche here. I think if we had a Volkswagen right here, we would really have the end-to-end -end evolution from inception to what we got today. We have some great wow, Porsches. Wait, we need up. Hitler's thing. <laughs> the thing. The Klubel wagon or whatever the hell that's called. <laughs> Who's that? Who sat around in like 1973 and went, you know, what, you know what the American public needs? The Hitler mobile. My name is Marco Gerasi from uh, TLG Porsche Service and we have our 1963 356 T6B outlaw car. I am uh, going to make this admission. Uh, I uh, normally do not like this version of the Porsche body style. I pick up on the 911s, but this is spectacular. I'm saying, I think you it's know, your such a sucker for this red leather interior, but coming off the silver and the stripe, it's, a great and it's just a great, great looking car. And uh, this thing is uh, original, I hear? Uh, well, no, no, this no. is uh, this is the end of a three-year restoration project the car was oh found. it's an outlaw oh yeah it's a full outlaw car this but um, you said i heard you say off the air that it only had thirteen thousand miles since original we've, since we did a full restoration oh okay. thirteen thousand miles ten of which or ten and a half of which are on the racetrack oh, okay that's we, good he's more track miles than i dig that i think that I, I like you that. use this car like too, too. Oh, beat the but crap you out can't you can't pick up the it only has thirteen thousand original miles on it right. since we restored well, it well you know you zero the speedo uh, okay you know, you keep track of it. all right i i got it i was i was having a beer i was only listening yeah hey, what the hell is this kid doing here <laughs> hey, what, it wouldn't be a shoot without your kid running through it like screwing sports. it up steel body oh all steel all steel body all steel. and uh they're they they make these things now. Or? Well, this is this is a 356. This is a, you know a 63 car. Right, they right. do make replicas. We don't deal with replicas. We only deal with the real deal. Right. You, you, you basically took the the hull of a, a 356 and did your treatment to it. Yeah. We um these cars are usually you know 1600 cc's with you know four cylinders and a four speed tranny. This car actually has a five speed transmission, mm -hmm. 911 rear suspension, 2.3 liter motor with 48 millimeter Webers. Uh, 911 brakes all the way through. Um, it's a hot rod, you know. It's let's go racing car. And and it's a six. No, no, it's a four cylinder. Oh, it's a bored out. It's a it's a big stroke Type Four motor, which is oh. a two liter. So it's been bored. I was confused because like the 914 six had a two liter Correct. six in it, right? Correct. So, yeah. uh, so it's just a it's a big thumper, uh, four cylinder. You know, nice. Can't break it. And uh, lots of That's torque. That's a good thing, though. Trust me. And you that. try, it's a right? Torque motor. I've tried to break it. It just won't break. I think if you got the NOS going on this thing, you could make it into a wheelie mobile. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the sound I'm talking about. Nice. Nice. And again, uh, the right. Nothing the... extra. No. I, no. I dig the fact that the, the car is really clean and gutted. There's no AM crappy blah punk radio in it. radio. Can't hear it anyway. That's right. Dual oil coolers in the front, yep. one, in each, uh, ah. one in each wing. So like uh, you get the cooling through here. Uh, it has there. a GT rally tank, so it's mm -hmm. got you know some mileage to it. And the four-cylinder gets fairly decent mileage. Sure. So. Not the way you drive, though, of course. Uh, Hammer like, down. I can see yeah, Mark. Pretty much. Marco hammering this thing. Yeah, yeah. beat the crap out of it. It is uh, nice. Really cool well, leather thanks. straps. Yeah. yeah. Very original. Good Thank you color, very much. Now, wait a minute. Let's do this. What do you think about this car right next year? We'll get the... Oh, it's, it's <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I built it. So. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, here, here's the There's owner. a little, little, okay. little thanks, plug there for Yeah, no problem. How you guys doing? Good. And you are? Dave Donnelly. Dave. Neighbor Dave. Dave, Dave Dave works across the street. Yeah, he's letting us use our parking lot, or his parking lot over there, and uh, much thanks yeah, for He gets that. a free hot dog and a beer out of it. Yeah. So Dave, tell us about this 911. What year is this thing? So it's a 1970. It started out as a 911T. It mm -hmm. was uh, a local LA car. So this started off as the bottom of the barrel, but who cares because you're stripping it down to the exactly. barrel. I mean, it had no, no sway bars on it. It was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of fun to drive like that. Right. So you took this thing and got it down to the tub? Got it down to the tub and uh, did a uh, bare metal restoration. There was no rust, no accident marks on the car. And uh, TLG built it up for me, put a, a Euro 83 3 liter with PMO carbs on it and 915 tranny has all Carrera suspension. PMO carbs. You I got those I, on your I got, Lambo, I think. I got those on a Mira. Uh, yeah. I'm weird that way. Isn't that guy like work out of his mom's house yeah, in Santa Monica? Like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. 
What the hell's going on? <laughs> California. No All right. Kooks here. Yeah. Uh, about how much horsepower do you think you're putting? It's about 200. To the uh, to the to the flywheel. About 200. Yep. And uh, five speed. Five speed. Regard? 915 tranny from a mm-hmm. from an SC. And what other little touches? Now, like I'm looking around the front of the car, I'm seeing little pieces like this in the front of the car just under the uh, euro headlights and is that a fabricated piece that's a fabricated piece that uh, a company makes uh, that's uh, meant to replicate the 911r look mm-hmm. uh, lightweight fiberglass same thing it, with the rear tail lights. It's, it's funny because when you see these cars and they've been breathed on you immediately sort of forget what was it piece of graded like there's some chrome stainless there, or something stainless yeah there was a something. chrome uh, horn grill there right right yep. uh exactly. and what other little little mods uh i mean they're little little things like i think like the uh windshield screen sprayer mm-hmm. blacked out mm-hmm. versus chrome little little touches like that this orange and what what do you call this this, orange? Is, this is signal orange this car was originally signal orange and for some reason the original owner in uh, like around 71 after the car was only a year old. Over the perfect paint, paint job. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. I did this, this car, uh, this orange, a signal orange and the powder blue they have are the two coolest of the uh, old 911 colors to me. It's I probably so. why it looks so good in that golf livery because it's essentially taking those two colors and just putting them putting them together almost exactly but yeah this is the color it, it it works really nicely because everything everything that's black all the trim the dash the windshield wipes Stands everything out. just pops so nicely off it and um the uh old school fuchs on here old school fuchs these are 15 by 7 fuchs uh, refinished by al reed the, the proportions of the rim to tire on these cars when they when they put big rims look awful the 15s they just look right. This right. is actually a, uh, a factory 914 leather wrapped wheel. That's a 914 uh, wheel. It's a 914 wheel with the factory leather on it. The 911 stock wheel always looked a little too big. It's a little boat-like. The, the 914 <laughs> wheel looks Small. stock, but yeah. it is, it's the same shape. It's just been shrunk down 20%, and it works really nicely on this car. Right. Uh, right. The exhaust tips on this were actually designed by uh, by Singer Automotive, and I know you've done a story it, on, on them. And, some uh, secret ceramic coated something. Exactly, something. exactly. It's cool. So yeah, uh, very nice looking. It sounds to, good. Add to the touch and the sound. The blue Porsche looks great off off the orange. Uh, the 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 rear tail lights. Uh, obviously, the shroud has been fabricated. What are the lights themselves from? Do you know? Those are uh, those are actually the same lights that they used in the 911R. Oh really? Yeah, they are. <clears throat> and the uh, what looks like an exterior mounted hinge for the deck lid. The here. internal hinges have been removed, and uh, titanium hinges. These are uh, similar to the R hinges. It makes it a little easier to work on because you can literally fold this. Right. Uh, it, oh, I see. Them. Yeah, you get uh, you get you get 180 degrees as opposed to. 100 degrees exactly nice those are my carbs those you are know your what carbs. i like about them gans i got a little window in them that's I got right. a little porthole you can tell if there's gas going in there or not <laughs> kind of hard to check when you're driving but, nice you know. yeah <clears throat> and uh air filter is interesting looking as well that's uh that's a uh, intake made by i think fab speed and uh actually adds uh probably three or four horse Fab Speed with Sandy's gay porn name back in the late 80s. Fab, I you want to go to kind of a Euro, that, man. Euro taste. Yeah, my reputation. Well, shall, you, shall you fire it up? I we shall. shall. I give shall. it a listen. Hold the mic back there, Gans. Get a little fan noise, too, which is always Oh, yeah, always like a little air fan cool motor. Noise. Sounds good. I like that. Sound. I like that the key good. on the left there, by the way, because I, I must say, not in the column, just on the left side of the wheel. Yeah, I'm not going to go with you on that one. Hold on a second. Now you're going <laughs> to go with me. I'll tell you why. Uh, I just turned in my Audi. It's it's a 2008. It, it's state of the art. You know, it says $55,000 German. You know, timepiece. It's mm-hmm. the nicest thing ever built, and yet. 
every fourth time I get in the car, I put the key in, I got to jiggle the wheel just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit to get that key turned. In 2008, out of Germany, got to give a little, and sometimes if I'm holding coffee or something, I'll give the knee a little, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Get a little yeah. jiggle. In. Remember, it's, it's, it's not a Dodge Dart from 1967. It's a sign you're driving too nice a car. I know, but so no <laughs> jiggle in the wheel with this baby, uh, right? Not at all. Not at all. Get in, turn the key, and... And away you go. Nice uh, Talbot style mirror on there. Yeah, this is actually a, a mirror that was made uh, by Hella back in the 60s. And I oh, found really? it brand new at a museum in Germany. And I bought it on eBay. It came still in the plastic and everything. Nice. Yeah, so it was, it was actually an option at the dealerships for like a couple of years. And that you know, just adds to the, the, the retro look to the car. Pretty, pretty car. And uh, we know it's no trailer queen. Nope. Because uh, we see it parked next door on uh, almost a daily basis here yeah, when I we come in to do the podcast. I drive once in a while. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's pass the torch. Let's pass the torch to what would be the next and thank you. Not, not the final, but uh, pretty close to uh, the final evolution of the uh, 911. If, in fact, this is a 911. I call it. Hi, I'm Batim with uh, BBI Autosport. Mm -hmm. The car is definitely not as cool as those two, but it sure does go fast. Yeah. Um, it's cool it was, in a different way. Yeah. All right, so what do we have here? Let's step back. This is a 996 Porsche. It's a 2003 that mm -hmm. we... It's kind of our test mule from the shop. It went from a 3.6 liter. It's got our 3.8 liter kit in it. And sure. then we, we stuffed it, set a huge turbos on it. This one made uh, 900 to the tire with C16 fuel. Wow. And that's at 30 pounds of boost. And we built the car to go to 35, so... Uh-huh. 35 pounds of right. boost, which so would get you over a thousand yeah, horsepower. Yeah, get us over a thousand of those. And to the rear tires. Right. Jeez Louise. Um, so now, if you run it off of, or does it run off of pump fuel? Yeah, we we have a we have a five gallon methanol tank in the front of it. So, uh -huh. uh, when it goes pumping methanol, we did uh, 798 to the tire, and uh -huh. that's that's at 25 pounds of boost. And driving every day with that. Yeah, stuff. and then you know we we can run it down to 11 pounds of boost, and the thing pulls like a. It just it has a nice linear, nice linear power curve instead of feeling like you get rear-ended by a truck when the turbos come on. So back in the day when people built a turbo motor before they had all the computers and they could do all the uh, advancement of the ignition and all that kind of stuff, they just go well eight to one compression, and then we'll just let the boost do the work, and thus there was all that turbo lag, right, and then the right. boost would kick in. And so now, when you build a modern turbo motor, what do you? How much compression do you build into it? We're actually up into the ten to one range right now, and uh, ten to one, because plan we, and planning on running thirty pounds of right, boost, right. On, so you have or thirty five on a good day. We do some uh, top speed runs and Texas, you know, standing mile runs. And sure. Was a silver doll? Would a silver state something? What, yeah. yeah. What yeah. will this thing do in the? In standing? the standing mile, this one will go two twenty one. Wow. Uh, and then. <laughs> Last uh, last year when we went, we did we also did 221 in this one's sister's car, but we had a slipping clutch in sixth gear. And... Well, well, speaking of slipping clutches, so you know you, you're going to get a car, and you're going to try to get close to a thousand horsepower out of it. Now what with the transmission and the transaxle, and I should say transaxle, and but just joints and bearings and things like. How much monkeying needs to be done with the rest of the drivetrain? Not as much as people think. Uh, Porsche has built such a stout gearbox in these things. You know, you'll twist axles up if you run slicks and try to, you know, if you leave the line real hard like the quarter mile guys do, you'll start twisting axles right, and, right. and breaking first gears. But, you know, in Porsches, in their motorsport parts bin, we pull a lot of stuff from there, like their cup cars, their, they, they have removable first gears with spline shafts. So you can't, you I shouldn't say that, you can break them, but it's... It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. So there's really not a, a ton. I mean, uh, there's not a, a ton to do to the car other than the, the motor and the clutch. To get the power. You to, know, you have to, to get, get the power. You have to get the fuel system and then... Uh, right. And Tune, then, but uh, the tuning's got to be huge. Yeah, tuning's huge. The big thing is, I, I think, is the chassis work on these. is um, mm -hmm. getting rid of the rubber. You put a big sticky tire on the back of them, and, and if you have rubber bushings on the control Stairs. arms... Yeah, mm -hmm. you, they, they just it just goes everywhere. So we... we Delron. Do, Delron or monoballs. Everything's actually in the back of them. What are monoballs? Uh, you, they're, they're spherical bearings. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get one ball. I, 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 know, I thought you knew. I had a dog that had that. But monoball. I, no, I, I, come just, on. They're spher what are yeah, they spherical made bearings. out of? I they're guess they're, they're made out of steel. Some of them have Teflon lining. Because uh, on the, a lot of the Delron bushings, 
-hmm. you, you get one a swing axis out of them, and the back suspension, the rear suspension on these cars, they the control arm throughout the sweep will move in, in a couple like different a, axes. Like Wife a, and I like had this <laughs> argument two days ago. <laughs> she won, by the way. I said, I said uh, mono ball. She said Delron. You know, that's the way we roll. She's right. The interior's got a got a roll bar. In it, stainless steel looking too. That's Which, actually a factory part from Porsche. Really? Slick. Yeah, they they sell that. You know, we, we make our own version, but this is a, it's just a, it's the uses better, obviously. Obviously, uh, zero to sixty, and I, I mean, and I, I'm guessing just hooking the tires up becomes the biggest issue. Right. The Pilot Sport, uh, Pilot Sport Two is Michelin's, but you know, we're wrapped around uh, HRE wheels. That those to me, some of the best wheels on the planet. They made down in Vista. They're they're on all of our high-speed cars, all of our big power, all of our track cars. Three, We're actually our background is ALMS racing. Three fifteen twenty five. <laughs> it's it's a tire boiler. Was, yeah. Well, can we uh, can we fire it, it up? Yeah. And and um, let me ask you a question about uh, boost control. Uh, you can control that from where you sit. Right. Yeah. It's all it's all done right in the center console. We uh -huh. usually on the factory ECU it controls all the boost, but we we take it over so we can actually run. All the way down to 11 psi, mm -hmm. uh, which which is so when you're getting pulled over, get yeah. it down to 11. Yeah. Officer, exactly. come on, we're only making 570 a, horsepower of, here. Yeah, so well, at, uh, if you out of racing fuel and methanol, right, you right, turn yeah, and you can still go run around, you know, 500 to the tire, which is awesome. But if you have good fuel in it, you have basically 450 wheel horsepower at a turn of a knob. Wow, it's kinda, it reminds me of the 935s back when they had the knob in the center console yeah. at Daytona. Spring you know? and a wastegate. Yeah. The, I mean, they literally would just stiffen the spring on the wastegate, yeah, make it harder for it to blow we'll put past. Put springs it. in there. And, yeah. yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's, let's fire her up. Yeah. yeah, nice exhaust. Wow, that's some really nice plumbing and uh, those. I'm calling them wastegates. Yeah, those, those are blow off valves. And uh, as far as uh, turbos go, you know, they always used to say, you know, things oil fed. When you when you park the car, let it let it idle for a minute, let the let it spool down. Is there is that still still uh, you going know, on? If you're really abusing the car, yeah, you want to let it idle for a little bit. But these are you know these hot houses or the center sections are all ceramic. Yeah, now. they're all ceramic ball bearing and water cooled. So as the mono ball. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it's not, it's not, uh, it's and they're water, they're water cooled right, right. as well. The turbos are water cooled. Mm -hmm. What's cool is there's air conditioning in this car. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, beautiful. I love the fact that you're getting a thousand horsepower out of under four liters. And he drove it here. And he drove it here and it's got air conditioning and uh, you can probably take it out tonight. Uh, thank you. This, is, uh, this has been uh, our Thank pleasure. You. Great. Thanks for bringing it down. I think we want to get a portion out.